A TNA Top 10 Production. Thank you then. Hello. Okay. Oh, you and your fucking letters. Hello. Again. Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. Cheeky little episode. And it's Top 10s of whatever we're about to talk about. Enjoy or endure, you decide. Cheers. In this episode, we're going to talk about our favourite video nasties. Oh, have a bit of music here, or just keep this bit in. Let's start off by talking a little bit about Video Nasties for the people who don't quite know what oh, this is. Are you going to do the, the history bit In now? the UK. Uh, can I just not do my top ten? During the 80s, a select group of people elected themselves the moral conscience of the country. Who? Mary Whitehouse and the NVALA. What's that mean? That the mean? National Viewers and Listeners Association. Oh campaigned against any movies they deemed excessively violent or exploitative. Right, but why did they react? And it was because of the video explosion. Uh, There was a loophole whereby these films had originally bypassed the review process of the BBFC. And as a result of this campaign, the Director of Public Prosecution identified a list of 72 films which actually began with an initial list of 39. For the um, Video Nasty Purist, there was an original 39 list. I think they were banned outright, followed by a list of a further 33 films. They were generally seized and destroyed. So if you were found in possession of a Section 1 film, that initial list, you were prosecuted. If you were in the possession of a Section 2 film, you were not prosecuted if you handed the film over as a kind of acknowledgement that you recognised it was offensive. Most of these were destroyed. Interestingly, all this movement did was generate more interest. A lot of the films on the Video Nasties list are fairly substandard, apart from the odd classic. And normally, under normal circumstances, a lot of these films would have disappeared into obscurity, but actually generated even more interest. In fact, there was rumours that some of the distributors even wrote in to complain about their own films in the hope that they would generate more interest, which generally they did, and they made a lot more money from those films. And speaking for ourselves, we watched a lot of shit because it was on the Video Nasties list. It generated a list that a lot of the avid horror fans set about ticking them off yeah, their to-do tick list. list yeah. yeah, to try and watch all of them. So, And that's where we are. A lot of these films have been released uncut. And let's face it, you can kind of get hold of a version of these films pretty much online or yep. you can watch them now anyway. The worst thing about it was a lot of the films were seized and destroyed a lot of copies, yeah. making them rarer. But also a lot of these videos are now quite hard to come by but yeah. so, which which is still good for a collector's market still generates a bit of interest even to this day so these are our favorite video nasties I, I will also say of the 72 films that we're picking our favorites from which was again the initial 39 and the second list of 33 because other lists did follow i think there was a follow list of about 84 that were yeah there was kind of, a one two and three wasn't yeah it? but even some of the ones on that list were heavily cut Anyway, so if you want more detail about the full list, you probably should look at it. We're not going to talk about the full list. We're only going to choose our particular ones that either of us have liked. Listeners will probably disagree completely with us. But there you go. Right. And that's and this is where we come in then. I've got a question for you. What have all these directors got in common? They've got Toe Hooper, Dario Argento, Gero Diodata, Jess Franco, Joe D'Amato... Lucio Fulci, Umberto Lenzi. What do they, what connects them in terms of video nasties? This is a lot great. of, a lot of them are Italian, I guess. Um, but I mean, those were the directors that appeared more than once on the list. So that's. Do you say Toe Pooper? Toe Pooper. Yeah, you're no. true. I know. Does it? There was yeah, true. There, there is, was. Yeah, you're right. Uli Lommel as well, but I didn't really class him because he just had Boogeyman One. Boogeyman. 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 <laughs> Boogeyman. <laughs> Boogeyman 1 and Revenge of the Boogeyman. Yeah, which I've watched Revenge of the Boogeyman. But anyway, let's make a start. Our top 10. 10. Last House on the Left. Okay. I think it's a good film, but I don't particularly enjoy it. I guess that was never the intent, I guess. Really? It's, not, it's not on my list. Not though. on your list at all. Yeah. No, you no, really don't enjoy that. Because infamous. I, yeah, it's infamous, and it is a definitely a video nasty. And I still think 
it packs a punch. Mm. <laughs> Still, it's not a very I... nice film. Oh, there's like there's bits in it that are not only jarring in terms of the comedy with the police jarring. officer. Jarring. But yeah, it's just but some of it is bollocks. But having said that, when it gets into it and the bits that are uncomfortable, they are still very uncomfortable. Yeah, it's... and I, I get with that, I get why it was video nasty. Um, some of these, I go, you're joking, but that I go, okay. Uh, yeah, it more than warrants its place on the list of seventy two, and. David Hess sings. Nine. Evil Speak, because I think it's a great film. My number nine, Evil Speak as well. Yeah, go on, carry on. Um, Eric Wesson, yeah. We, I mean, we we reviewed it as well, and we quite liked yeah, it. So, yeah, so, yeah. To be honest, I never watched it at the peak of that. We, it was never one on the top, because it was never meant to be that dodgy, so we never really got round to it as much as some but of the When we watched ones. it recently, I know yeah, we, we quite yeah, enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. Eight. The Burning. Number eight, The Burning. Have you got that on your list at all? Yeah, on, I, I wasn't sure about it, but I had it in the... the it was either a memorable, honourable mention. <laughs> um, I was touring with it in 10 or 9, so yeah, yeah. I, oh, no, I, I think it's... a I, Well, it's, it's, in, it's definitely in that list, because I think it's a very good slasher. It's a very good slasher, and I, I put it in the top 10 probably for the boat scene alone, where he takes out a couple of the kids all in one go. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, quite yeah. good. Seven. Dead and Buried. I mean, it shouldn't be a video nasty. It's just a good film. Yeah. But if you, it's in there, so I'm going to put it in there. It's slow moving. The twist is one of the best you'll get. You, you don't really see it coming, but you yeah. kind of should. And it's got a creepy, dour, depressing atmosphere. And the ending's quite... Yeah, downbeat yeah, as yeah well, it's it? all, it's all, and it's and bits of it are really quite gory. I think yeah. it doesn't feel like one of the standard video nasties because it was a quite a big label. Oh yeah, yeah, it's too well made. That's one thing. Um, yeah, it's just a well Which made film. Six. The Beyond, and you're probably going to get annoyed that I put that quite low down. What numbers out? I like it. I, it's not one I would repeatedly watch. I think there's bits in it that are too cheesy now. I don't mind the dated stuff. Like, you was on about last night that dated. I don't care about that. But the tarantula scene, I remember seeing that even as a young kid watching it and going, oh, that's a bit shit. Yeah. And, I, and you could get away and say, oh, but then he's trying to be surreal and all that. No, it's just not very yeah, good. It's not very bit. good. But I, there, so I can forgive him for all that. There's incredible well, bits in it, though. And yeah, visually, it, there are some... Cool, yeah, really, the ending really and the, really the, memorable. the girl getting her head blown off as well is an amazing thing. To be honest, I, I hope there's a version where they cut that bit out and can just keep the CGI, rest of it. A good, yeah. a good, a good lashing. No, no. No, <laughs> just cut it out. C- it's, it's pointless. Five. Another one of his zombie flesh eaters. Oh, okay. Or zombie, but it's zombie flesh eaters in the UK when he got banned. Yeah. A lot of people like the Beyond more, uh, and I used to, but I think I like zombie flesh eaters. As it's a better, scarier film. Yeah, I just think it is. I used to like the Beyond more because it was. Yeah, I like the music better in the Beyond as well, but I think in terms of a, a gory film that I would watch more often, I think the zombie flesh eaters is there more than the beyond I think, I think zombie flesh eaters is more a quintessential video nasty isn't it yeah four i'm now looking at this list and i'm wondering where we should have put it higher but the living dead at manchester mall or the okay. living dead as it was called i think yes they it. another film we've talked about in previous episodes yes when you get to this george grau this is a fucking amazing film i mean it's a film that i think gets better with age okay yeah cool it's, it, this isn't dated it's like vintage it's like watching a hammer film in a way it's not yeah it deserves its place on the video nasties list in places because it is quite gory. Yeah. okay yeah cool three bay of blood or blood Mario. bath as it was Mario called. Mario Bava. Call, I should call it Bloodbath because that was the one that was banned in the UK. It started all the slashes. It's incredibly gory. And um, it shot really well. And we've talked about it previously as well. So yeah, yeah Twitch of the Death Nerve, Bay of Blood, Bloodbath. And had a very good video cover as well. Like. Yeah, again, it's another film that it had quite a lot of kills in, quite gory. And I'm not... A lot of the ones I'm saying are on your list as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but they were, they were always going to be, weren't they? Because these yeah. are the proper classics. Yeah. Three. Come on! Tenebrae. 
Argento. Classic. It's, yeah, it's a classic, and the video cover's amazing. Everything about it's amazing, including... Music. Goblin, awesome soundtrack, as always. It used to be my favourite Argento film. It isn't anymore. I think I, it's because I, I didn't like the surrealistic bits uh, of his other films. Um, and now so you've I, embraced I, them more. Again, it's another one where I've revisited it recently. I don't know if it's aged that well, but I still love it. So, yeah, Tenebrae. Two. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Hang on, though. Ah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That was on the third tier list. That actually... It's not in the 72. No, it's not in the 72. And that's very surprising because we knew it was banned almost immediately. So, And it came out quite about the same time as the rest. So it was I think the difference was that that did undergo certification from the BBFC. Yeah, we might be actually. Yeah, just. I think it was almost a film that was banned by the BBFC, but not classed as a video nasty. I've fucked up a bit, haven't I? But um, well, you, you just listen to me review. Yes, yeah, so you're very fond of that film, yeah. so I'll let it pass. I'll let it slide. Two. Inferno. Inferno. That should have never been a video that... nasty, really. Out of all of the ones that got banned, that was always my favourite above any of his. In terms of my favourite films he's ever made, they keep changing it every time, and it goes from Tenebrae, Deep Red, Inferno. Now it's Asperia. That's because it's fucking good. Yeah. A very, very close second is Inferno. Inferno, all the way through, is like one oh, big I... music video. I Keith I'm Emerson. A... Great yeah. soundtrack. One. Evil Dead. Evil Dead. By a fucking yeah. country mile. Because it, it is a proper video nasty. Because it's quite grim. It looks cheap and everything. But that's what made it ace. And I remember the first time I watched it, even now, the cheapness, I think we've probably said this before, but the cheapness made it what it is as well. Yeah. It looks grubby. It looks like it's, or it's not a documentary style, but it's, it looks it's almost, realish. Apart from the cartoonish violence, it looks almost... Yeah, like a documentary, like a found footage thing. Yeah. I think I think it sits amongst the more infamous ones, like Last House on the Left, like Cannibal Holocaust, like Faces of Death, Evil Dead, are all the kind of key ones, the key yeah. staples. Everything else can probably get fucked in terms of video nasty, but that's like a true proper video nasty. Yeah, it's got that sleazy kind of thing about it, because Sam Raimi's fucking 80s. It's just really well made as well. Yeah. So that's the difference... With- this guy is, uh, might be grim and sleazy, but he knows what he's doing with a camera. He does. Yeah, so that's your top ten. It is, right. There's a lot of duplication. I'll not have much more to say about it, although I think around I bet you ten, fucking will. You there fucking we will. go, then. So... <laughs> Am I all right interjecting and saying you're twat? Before I start? Well, well go on. Yeah, okay, okay. Ten... Okay, I like this film. I don't know why I liked it, but I did. So at number 10, uh, Late Night Train. Because it has a lot of Italian stars in it. It was the kind of Italian version of Last House on the Left. And I enjoyed it a lot more than Last House on the Left. I think I've seen it, but I can't remember it. I think I watched it so long ago. Um, And it's got Dennis... Roussos in it as well, so, you know, singing it. Yeah, no, you've got got a problem with that. No, nobody has. Nine... Number nine, Evil Speak, as we've already mentioned, Eric Wesson. Eight. Now, number eight, I have actually put Flesh for Frankenstein, and the reason is because I loved it. <laughs> the, Paul Morrissey, uh, I loved it. I don't think Andy Warhol I had think, any, well, anything I think you've got to a do. soft spot on it because you were trying to get it on VHS yeah, for years Yeah, and, well. and it's really camp, and it's really icky. What about Blood for Dracula? No, I didn't like it as quite as much. Mm. I didn't think that was quite as good. Flesh of Frankenstein was a lot better film, a lot more fun. It is fun. Um, Yeah, I like it. Seven. Number seven, Inferno. Mine's quite high up, isn't it? Inferno, and I love Dario Argento, but there you go. So, Mm. Inferno at number seven. Six. Bay of Blood, which we've already spoken about. Five. Number five, Zombie Flesh Eaters. You know, it's a classic. I love it. Four. Number four, as we've already said, another Dario Argento, Tenebrae. It's not my favourite Dario Argento film, although I love all his films, so what can you say? Three. Manchester Morgue, Living Dead at Manchester Morgue, because yeah. I like Manchester Morgue. Yeah, I love it. 
and I think it gets better and better and probably if we do this again in five years which God help us we're never going to do this fucker again <laughs> it'll probably be number one to be honest because yeah. that, that's it how it was much... good to watch we watched it at the cinema we, we said it on that double bill yeah. by the way if you're interested in Zombie Flesh Eaters or Let Sleeping Corpses Lie oh, it's got so many names yeah we, we talk about it in our zombie double bill. Yes, it's one of them, and it's a double bill, and we lo- we liked both films, but I think we particularly love this one. Yeah. It is really good. Yeah. Two. Lucio Fultz's best film, The Beyond. It's got Fabio Fritz's music, which is an absolutely fab soundtrack. One. Boringly, is Evil Dead. Because it's an absolute okay. classic. I'm surprised you job. went for this. I thought you might go for Dazza or Alicia. Le- no, Fulci no, because oh, it's. Yeah. It, I, I love Evil Dead. I, I mean, and, and actually, and you will completely disagree with this. I actually prefer it to the second one. I know you love Evil Dead too. I actually prefer the first one. So first, no, no, I, I, they're, they're good. They're, they're two different things. They're, aren't yeah, they? they're, they're two they're different, different creatures. Film. The second one's an action comedy, and the first one's a horror scary film yes it, um, and that is our top 10 so the one thing i will point out is that neither me or tony have watched possession or we keep seeing online that possession is one of the if not the best video nasty however i've got a feeling we'll watch it and we'll think it's a good film but we'll think it's a little bit too arty for this list because a video nasty should be you know Gestapo's Last yeah. Orgy or Beast in Heat or yeah, you know all these other ones that are meant to push people's buttons and I'm not sure apart from a woman having sex with a kind of squiddy creature I'm not sure I think we would put it into the top 10 anyway as a what we call a genuine video nasty that, that, out of all the rest we need to watch and it's just hard to get hold of but I believe it's come out well if Blue you're now, it, I don't think it's difficult if you're willing to pay the money but we're tight so we won't pay for it and that is our top 10 of Video Nasties. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I hope you enjoyed that. And the point is, you know, if you've not heard of some of those or, you know, you've not heard of the Video Nasties, please been enlightening. Check them out. You'll love them. If you're into horror, I think you'll find something in the list you'll get a kick out of. So crack on, do one.